Hi, I'm back again with another video for uh, February 2020. Um, so in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about on my thoughts about sketchbooks. You can see this video is um, some appropriate sketches that I did last month. Um, I visited Italy and the Vatican. Uh, I was there for my sister's wedding, and I really loved these sea creatures that were on the mosaic floor in one of the rooms of the Vatican. And so I kind of wanted to do my own version of those sea creatures. So the first two of these were done on the plane home from uh, the wedding. And then the last one I did to kind of round it off, I felt like three would be a good number. So I did one more. So I wanted to talk about sketchbooks because I feel like it's a, um, a topic that there is some kind of different opinions on in kind of artists circles. I feel like on the one hand, there's the people who say, you know, you're, you're not a real artist if you don't have a sketchbook and you should be taking it everywhere. And, um, you know, if you, if you don't do that, then like, you know, you're, you're doing it wrong, basically. And then on the other hand, I know artists who don't keep a regular sketchbook and um, they still make great art and, um, you know, record great ideas in other ways. And so for me, I was first really introduced to this idea of the artist sketchbook in high school. My high school art teacher, um, she was really great. And one of the things that she did require that we do would, was not only to keep a sketchbook, but we were required to do it in pen so that it wouldn't smudge and get ruined. And um, we were also required to date each sketch that we did. Um, and so, it was a really great practice, and because of that, I became very comfortable in drawing with a um, ballpoint pen, actually, and that's probably my preferred medium to sketch in to this day. But um, one thing that she asked us to do, in addition to those things, which really helped me, I think, have um, a more healthy attitude toward um, sketching and sketchbooks was, um, she said, I want you right now, and to even practice saying this in your head so when it comes up um, that you, you know, you know, you know what to, you're going to say is if someone asks you to see your sketchbook and you are not comfortable with them looking through it, you politely tell them no. That um, the sketchbook is not a show-off book. Um, a sketchbook is not this uh, beautiful collection of, of finished masterpieces. A sketchbook is, it's a sketchbook. It's a place where you're practicing and you're making mistakes and you're kind of just experimenting and, and learning. And um, I, I really uh, loved that and it really helped me to kind of keep a sketchbook. Um, I will say that I'm still only like an intermittent sketchbooker at best. I do keep like a, a bullet journal. And so I do have like a, a book available to write things down or sketch when, um, like when, when I have the opportunity, but I don't, I'm not always getting it out because I, I'm a mom, I'm busy. There's a lot of things going on in my life. Um, but I have really, I, I've always, um, kind of held on to that, uh, idea of a sketchbook that she, um, she, you know, gave to us there that it's like, this is, this isn't a, a place for like, fancy artwork that you go and open up and show off. This is where you're, you know, experimenting and learning and trying new things. In fact, I had, um, it, yeah, um, I don't want to make this sound like, oh, and then, uh, you know, this is actually a bad thing. So let me, before I tell this next story, I'm going to say, um, most people, when I had, have told them in the past that, okay, you know, I'd really rather that you don't look at my sketchbook. It's, you know, kind of a, a learning space and it's not finished artwork. Um, they take it very well. Most people are very polite. I only had one experience in um, in college where one of my classmates, he was one of those people, he was, he was just an interesting character. And uh, I wonder in retrospect if, I, I don't know, I don't know if he was autistic or something, but he just didn't pick up on social cues or just did his own thing. <laughs> but um, he saw I had a sketchbook and it was on my desk. And we were listening to our, our teacher, um, I don't know, lecture or if he was doing a painting demo or something like that. 
I was asked, he asked, hey, can I look at your sketchbook? And I was like, no, I, I'd really rather not. This is just my workspace. And so I turned and I was watching the teacher and he ignored what I had said. I guess maybe he was like, he thought that I was uh, being modest or standoffish. I don't know. But he tried to sneak the sketchbook off of my desk in order to look at it. And it made me really mad. But um, that's my only experience where someone didn't respect when I asked them to not look at my sketchbook. Other, otherwise, um, people are very understanding, especially when I you know, explain that it's almost, it's kind of like a visual diary almost, that it, it's personal. Um, one of the other things this uh, high school teacher um, would talk about, this is not directly about sketchbooks, but I, I feel like it's in the same sort of vein. Um, she had kind of her own terms and vocabulary for a lot of things. Um, and so she would explain what a certain phrase meant, and then, um, it, you know, when she told you to do something, you'd know what it meant. In, in this case, she would, um, she used the phrase flying lessons, where um, if, if a painting or an art piece wasn't working, she says, well, you should just give it flying lessons. But there, there wasn't this um, expectation that if you, you started a painting or, or say, you know, if it was a drawing in your sketchbook, literally or figuratively, to just toss it out the window. And she told us that in, in her case, in her studio at home, she quite literally would uh, uh, throw it out. She had, I, I guess, a, a porch off the back of the house. She'd just walk out to the porch and she would literally throw the painting that wasn't working out into her yard. And then she said in the fall when she was cleaning up her yard um, for winter, she'd go and gather up all these old weathered paintings. And she said they had really great textures. And um, you know, then I would paint something new on top of them and, and this new texture and the colors from the previous painting would show through. And so ultimately the painting ended up being useful. But I feel like this is applicable to the whole discussion of having um, sketchbooks be a personal place for experimentation is also the idea of um, just because you've started and spent some time on an art piece, whether it's in the sketchbook or or on a canvas or whatever you, whatever medium that you're doing, doesn't mean that it's uh, going to go well. And I think that it's healthy to be able to just say, well, I tried that and let's let's start something new. We don't have to keep sinking time into something that's not working. And I think that's one of the values of sketchbooks and having this attitude of this isn't a finished piece of art to show off. You're experimenting to see um, what things might work and not feeling the pressure that you have to um, make it look good and have to, to finish it, um, especially if it's not working, because it's just a sketchbook. And um, it's a place to learn and to experiment. Um, one thing that I um, want to clarify, I guess, is that one thing that I've seen a lot of artists do very successfully is publish what, what they call um, a sketchbook. I'm, I'm thinking of Corey Godby is one that comes to mind and Jake Parker, and I know a bunch of other artists have done this, but they it's uh, published collections of drawing, uh, a collection of drawings or, or finished art pieces um, and, and some of them may be more loose and unfinished sketches type type pieces. Um, and so, I don't know, I think I'm calling it a sketchbook is fine, but again, I feel like it's, um, it's, it's important to understand the distinction of, you know, that these were art pieces that these, these people spent time finishing. They weren't just kind of one-off experiments that they just kind of, um, did in their sketchbook and, uh, um, it, it just came out so great and they're publishing just like a printed version of this book that they uh, did write the first time. Um, and I, I don't know if they're misleading people um, by calling it a sketchbook, um, but I don't know if people even stop to think about whether it was, um, you know, done that way the first time, basically. Um, one thing that I'm also seeing, I teach um, a painting class for adults on um, you know, once a week in the evenings. And um, just so, sometimes the um, 
even the initial drawing or the early painting part just um, doesn't go that well or it's not working. And um, th th there's th and different people have a different difficulty with it, but sometimes there's this reluctance to um, either start the painting over or make significant changes to your drawing once you spend some time on it. And um, it, it's been great. I think we're, we're, I don't know, five or six paintings in to this class now that we've been doing it. I'm seeing that the more comfortable they are becoming with the process and the painting and just their own ability level um, in, in making paintings and art, the more comfortable they become, I think, with uh, starting something new and um, not getting too attached or upset over something that might not be working. And so I think part of that is just it, something that comes with time. And that's another value, I think, that comes with a sketchbook where you do a lot of quick experiments um, and, and, and not spend too much time on them that you um, kind of develop a, a small body of work. Anyway, this is just me rambling some somewhat related um, thoughts on sketchbooks. I hope some of it was interesting. Um, I will be back with a new video next month.